Hey gang, do you find yourself listening to your music on one app and then listening to your podcast on another app? If you do, stop this insane behavior right now and download Spotify. Spotify is home to all of your favorite music and all of your favorite podcasts. Podcasts including Fly on the Wall, the Saturday Night Live podcast with Dana Carvey and David Spade. The Rock on Tours podcast with Gary Kemp and Guy Pratt. Old favorites like Fresh Air, My Favorite Murder, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Look, if you're looking for a news podcast or sports or entertainment or true crime, look, if you're if you're looking for a sewing podcast or an RV podcast, Spotify has all of this for you. That's Spotify. All of your favorite music and all of your favorite podcasts in one place. Find it in your app store and start listening today. That's Spotify, music and podcasts. Let's get down. Gang, are you looking for better sleep and relaxation or relief from pain or anxiety without feeling totally drugged? Well, let me tell you about True Hemp Science Full Spectrum CBD products. True Hemp Science promises premium quality, pure ingredients, and true value. They source the highest grade organic hemp from around the world to handcraft the finest full spectrum CBD products in the Austin area and beyond. They offer a complete line of full-spectrum CBD products, including oils, tinctures, skincare lotions, sports rubs, gummies, and chocolates. Gang, I've been using their products for a while now, and they've lowered my anxiety and given me incredibly restful sleep. How Did I Get Here has teamed up with True Hemp Science to bring you a very special offer that benefits all of us. Spend $100 or more at True Hemp Science, and they will include either the number 81 distillate, which is great for nighttime, or the number 23 distillate, which is great for daytime, with your order. And that is a $25 value. Just go to truehempscience.com backslash H-D-I-G-H. That's truehempscience.com backslash H-D-I-G-H. And balance your body and mind with True Hemp Science Full Spectrum CBD products. Let's get down. Johnny, I'm your host. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys all had a good weekend, whatever it is you did this weekend. I had a really good weekend. The weather here in Austin was really, really, really nice. Really nice. It was cool. It was beautiful. It was sunny. Spent a lot of time running around with Rosie, having a good time. Uh, That show Friday, I want to thank everyone that came out on Friday to the Skyrocket Show at 310 ACL Live. What a fun show that was. It was amazing. Uh, It was packed. The crowd had energy that was really like pushing. Then we gave the energy back. Then I feel like it crescendoed into this great insanity. I ended up singing uh, (laughs) Lady by Sticks, which I think sounded good. It was weird. We did it as the like the opening of the second set. It's kind of a weird thing to come out as like such a bombastic band or like this little quiet piano ballad. Maybe we'll put it in a different place next time and and shock the people. I actually went out and had some drinks with some people afterwards. I have not done that in so long, it feels like. It feels like I haven't done something after a show now in a while. And, and it felt really good. I came home, walked down to a... This is really funny. I found out that my license is expired. I, I, how do you fucking like space that shit out? Don't they send you some kind of, of email? Maybe they do. Maybe it went to my junk thing. Maybe I... I don't know. But I was, I was surprised to find out that my license is expired is expired. Sorry. We finished the show at, uh, at 310. My cousin was taking care of Rosie. So I came home, parked my car, put the important stuff I didn't want stolen away and, uh, and walked down to Jackalope near my house. It's a bar. It's a cool bar. They got an outside place inside. It's nice. Got music. So I go there and, uh, I, I told some people I'd meet them there. So I walk up there. It's a really nice night. And uh, walk up to the door, guys. Like, can I see your driver's license? I'm like, uh, yeah. He's like, I can't let you in, man. It's expired. I'm like, it's expired. How the fuck did I do that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, where's my head? How can I not just make sure that my driver's license isn't expired? So I'm going to Houston tomorrow. Got to find a way to to uh, find. It. Anyway, ended up uh, <laughs> ended up going like shit. I didn't I didn't have the phone number of the people I was meeting, and uh, I was like, well, I, I'm can I. I I, I just randomly walked up to a guy that was standing outside and I was like, hey, do you mind going and finding this person 
that I met at the show and their friend and see if they if they're if they're in there. And uh, he was like, "Are you Johnny Gowdy?" I swear to God, I was like, "Yeah, I am." And he was like, "Yeah, come on in with me." He's like, "Hey, man, no, this guy, this guy's okay to get in." So uh, we walked in, and I was like, "Wow, are you the owner?" And he's like, "Yeah, I am." So he used to be in a band, and we did shows together in the nineties. So the guy that owns Jackalope uh, walked me in. Very nice guy, but I can't remember his name. But he was <laughs> he was really really nice. Anyway, uh, I ended up leaving because I didn't see the people there. I ran into them in the uh, parking lot, and then we went over to Buzzmill, which is a great place also, by the way. You guys ever go to Buzzmill? That's a fantastic bar. It's also open 24 hours. You can get coffee there. Sometimes I go there and do podcast stuff, do some editing and stuff on there. <laughs> anyway, as I said, tomorrow I'm going to Houston. I'm going to play a show with Skyrocket, and, uh, and then I'm going to stay for the week because on Saturday, Skyrocket's playing another private show there. So I'm going to go down there, hang out with my grandma, my aunts. I've got some, uh, some Zoom podcasts to do. I've got some busy work to do, some booking stuff to do. Looking to go out and play some solo shows this year, a lot more than I have in a long time. So uh, I'm looking for gigs like that. If you know of any, send them my way, baby. The Johnny. Get him on your show. Gang, I have an amazing show for you today. Amazing show. My dear old amazingly talented friend, Amy Atchley, returns to the show today. She has a brand new record out, a gorgeous new record. Uh, it's her fifth album. It's called Sometimes a Woman is King, and it comes out on February 17th. She worked with uh, the great producer Robert Harrison from Cotton Mather. He's been on the show. Great dude. Old, another old friend for a long time. Uh, these songs are gorgeous. Gorgeous and a phenomenal production. I feel like it's it's kind of like the edgiest record that Amy's ever made, and that's pretty exciting. Uh, like from the opening song, which you'll hear, it's called "Down to the Sound." It's very uh, uh, quiet, loud, quiet. You know that that kind of combination. I love that combination. It's almost like the most rocking I've ever heard, Amy. Uh, very exciting record. Very gorgeous record. Her mom passed away uh, over the last couple of years, and uh, she wrote this beautiful song called "Run, Baby." Uh, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful for her mother. And just these songs are just really great. It's great guitar work by my dear friends, Chris Gebhard, the great Rusty, and uh, and the fabulous uh, John Sanchez, my dear old friend and, and guitar hero, one of my idols of guitar. Seriously, John, John Sanchez, when he was in Flying Saucers, that guy blew my mind. Anyway, Amy Ashley's an amazing songwriter, amazing musician. J.J. Johnson also plays on there, legendary drummer from uh, John Mayer and the Billy White Trio. I've known Amy for a long time. I started seeing her play, I think it was like 91 or 92, first time I ever saw her band Fabu with uh, David Hemmeline and my Pam Miller. Ended up being good friends with all of them and such a huge fan of that band. They changed their name to Hush in the 90s and I think they put out a record or two during that time. And uh, was just a beautiful, beautiful artist. I've worked with Amy before. She sang on a song of mine. And uh, anyway, I love Amy Ashley. She's amazingly talented. She's married to a, a dear old friend of mine, legendary saxophonist, legendary saxophonist, Elias Hasslinger. He really is, man. He plays Monday nights at the uh, at the at the at the Continental Club Gallery. Hey, gang, I want to let you know that Amy Ashley's record, uh, the gorgeous record, Sometimes a Woman is King, drops on February 17th. But she's having a release show on Saturday, February 18th at Pernanalis Station. You can go to amyashley.com and get uh, and get all your information about that release and stuff. Uh, that Pernanalis Station, I've heard a lot of music from out there. I've never been there, but I finally found out what it was when I was looking this up. Uh, I'll put a link to the tickets and stuff in the in the text of this podcast. You're about to hear this. The first song on the record is called Down to the Sound. So this is my friend, my dear old friend, the amazingly talented Amy Ashley and me chatting it up. Enjoy it. Let's get down. Come down now to the sound. I'm lost somehow, I found I am steady on this broken ground I need you just as I breathe Take me to the fields where we dream We all will be free I was trying to think, Anar and I were talking this morning and I told him you were coming over Aww. And he said to say hello Okay. And then I was trying to remember, didn't we go to your house or your place in New York? I was thinking about that this morning, too. We did? Yeah. Cause, okay, because I remember talking to you guys there, and I remember you worked at BH1 then? Yeah. Okay. I did. Nah, definitely, yeah. that was a conversation we had. 
Yeah, well, so, but what I remember about it was you guys, I think, I feel like you got stuck there. It was like weather. No, 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 no. We chose. We chose. Oh, you did? Because it, it was Thanksgiving. You we had were, Thanksgiving with us. And we were in the middle of a tour. Yes, and so you were. the other yes. two dudes went home. Oh, I see. And we were like, well, we're going to have to come back in four days anyway. Why don't we just hang out for like four days? <laughs> I loved it. I loved having y'all there. That yeah. was so great. Yeah. yeah. It was great. It was great seeing you. Uh, how long were you there? Um, a little over four years. Okay. Yeah. That's a hard place to do it, isn't it? It's just a hard place yeah, to do life. <laughs> it, it's a hard place to do life. I'll tell you that. But it, it really, like, for me, musically, it, it was an, an easier place for me to fit in, Yeah, you know, musically with my material. Um, so I, I really found it to be just, you know, embracing. And um, I, lear- I learned a lot, for sure. You know, the hard part, I think, really is just sort of the financials of it all. Yeah. You know, because that's so what expensive. I think I remember you guys telling uh, us because I wanted like that was at the height. That was one of the reasons why we stayed because I was like, Tracy, I'm going to find us a place to live here. Yeah. We're going to leave Austin and we're going to move to New York because we're suckers for not living here. And then you guys were like, well, I mean, <laughs> it's you can't just live like you did in Austin. No, no. There's no. like I remember you saying like you didn't get home until nine every night. And then yeah. it was just kind of hard to kind of get your thing going <laughs> after it a was. long day of work. Yeah. I mean, it was hard because we lived in Brooklyn, you know, so right. it's like a commitment. You know, it's a 45 minute train ride. Um, but we you know what we learned real quick is that um, when we got there that we were going to need to get full time jobs. Yeah. to support our music career. And, yeah. and that's what everyone was doing there. Unless you had just kind of sort of old family money or something. And there was a lot of that there too. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, we just kind of got into that and I lucked into a great job, which was helpful for my music, you know? Yeah. Um, all right. So let's talk about this album. Sometimes a woman is king. Is there a single that's out? I didn't look that up. Yeah. So that's going to be one of the singles. Okay. Um, we, we kind of have a few focus tracks. Um, Irene. Um, a great song. Thank you. Yeah. And then another tune that I think we're going to do a video for, we're working on it, um, is um, called Run Baby. Okay. That's that's the song about your mom. Yeah. What a exactly. great song. Thank you. It's beautiful. That's a hard, I, you know, I've lost my mom too. And yeah. uh, I've, it's hard to put that into words in yeah. a song. And you did it and gave it like a great chorus too. <laughs> Like what a what an awesome accomplishment Thank you gave us a chorus. It's not like a, like by the time you get to the chorus, you're feeling your heartstrings are being pulled, but then you can sing along. That's and that's my mom. That's her right there. So I I knew like I wrote that song. It came. It was one of those that came really quickly, like words and melody, just like right away. Yeah. Um. And when I got to the chorus, you know, I knew that um I wanted to keep it kind of up and have some movement to it, you know, because I didn't want it to be just so sad you know i wanted it to sort of capture her energy and at what point like how long had it been that she was gone that you she wrote was the song? dying she was dying when i wrote when it. you wrote the song oh yeah, wow so but, you were like in the thick of like mm-hmm. yeah. yeah sorry about that well thank you that's a yeah yeah it's i've been uh just sort of dealing with that for a while it's been a few years now but it's you know the grieving process you just can't put a a time limit on it you know yeah but music helps so I, I don't mean I know that I know that I'm smiling in it, <laughs> but I've noticed over the last like couple of years that we're getting to that age. I know. Don't even say it, but it's true. No, my no to the age where like, uh, hey, what's going on? Well, my siblings and I are all paying for my dad's new place to live because he was <laughs> living in his car and he has really bad time. But like, it's real shit. Like all yeah. of a sudden, we're in this point where like we're having to take care of the people that took care of us, and that their time is sort of like winding down and the reality Mm -hmm. of of the wind down of time can be really uh overwhelming yeah for sure (laughs) yeah i mean it definitely puts a lot of self-reflection yeah you know you know what i mean and um you know it, it also for me you know um i was super close with both of my parents super super close so it's just such a hard loss for me um i think for any anybody losing their parent um but I, I do take sort of a little solace in the fact that, you know, they had lived a beautiful, long life. And, yeah. and it's the natural order of things. And someone had told me that they were like, I know you're feeling down about this, but know that this is the natural order of things. Yes. And that just like really helped me navigate that time so yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, you have kids. You guys I have do. Kids. How I many do. do you have? Three? I have two. two. Okay. I have two. How old are they? Uh, 14 and 16. Wow. 
yeah. So there's a cycle of life situation going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's real. I mean, it's a real thing. Totally. Uh, how do you how do you talk to your kids about that? Like, do they like they're obviously at an age where they understand that concept of death, but like, how does that? I, yeah, I don't think they really quite understand, you know, they understand a certain sense of the finality of it, right. you know, um, and they had their own sort of grief with that. But um, I mean, it's just a lot to comprehend and take in, yeah. you know, um, not to pull out of the heaviness, but that song, you ever listen to Sam Phillips, like those records oh, you know, that you I made in like to. the early 90s? I used to a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. It has that vibe, that song. Like the chorus does. Which me. one? Which one? The uh, the uh, the run, run baby. Run baby. Yeah. Oh wow, cool. Yeah. I'm, I've had people tell me that before, not on that song necessarily, but other. Yeah, yeah, your voices have a similar quality, and also you write pop melodies. Yeah. You know, you. I mean, it's it, it's it's interesting because you are you're such a great songwriter. Thank like, you. And and this record seems to be. Production-wise, you worked with Robert Harrison, mm -hmm. who uh, is amazing from Cotton Mather. Yeah. Did your band play on the record? So, no. Sorry. hi, Rosie. <laughs> oh, she wanted to drink of my water. <laughs> no, you have your own water. Um, yeah, so um, I did have my band, and it, it kind of had several different iterations on that record. We, you know, when we started, it was right before the pandemic, and so it kind of transitioned a little bit. Just, it was a lot of stopping and starting and... We, we had um, Chris Gebhardt introduce me to Robert. Okay. Like I knew of Robert and we had played gigs together back in the day, you yeah. know, Cotton Mather and Hush and Fabu, but we didn't really ever connect musically or outside of that. Yeah. But so Chris was like, you need to talk to him about producing your record. Um, and so I, I did, I met with him and, and we decided just to give a few tracks a go. And uh, then it, I knew pretty quickly yeah i want to do a record with robert yeah um but chris is on that and uh john sanchez as well he's playing guitar. okay which one of those guys played the guitar solo on love light john sanchez okay. doesn't it sound just like john i don't know because oh, i mean he's one of my favorite you know john sanchez is one of my like he's he's like i don't I, if i stole something from someone i stole a lot of stuff from him man that's awesome he's so amazing he, not he 2000s very accomplished guitar player but like psychedelic early 90s john sanchez yeah. flying saucers sanchez i mean i always wanted to work with him you know i always did and it just kind of it worked out like this i always wanted to work with chris too and chris did play in my band before we started recording yeah so but i met john john actually showed up at my house um tuning the piano yeah yeah and i, I walked in and i was like uh, eli had arranged it and i was like oh my god i was like Sean Sanchez is in my living room. Yeah. And so we started talking and I told him I was doing this record. He's like, I'd love to hear it. And anyway, one thing led to another and he ended up playing on, um, I think three or four of the tracks. That's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I have to leave when he comes to tune my piano. Cause I just talked to him the whole yeah. time and just, he's like, Hey man, Hey, like I gotta go other places after this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's so fun. Yeah, yeah. He's the best. I love being around him. Yeah. It's funny because I've seen your, this is your fifth solo album. Right. Yeah. Um, and I've seen, I've been watching, I think it was 1991 or it was very early 1992 at a place that if you walk outside of where Antone's is now and you take a right and you go to the corner, they used to have a porch thing and you guys did a show with David Rice and David was a friend of mine from Houston. Yeah. And he stayed with me i lived at the congress and i came to the show with them and then fabu played it was before. fabu it okay. was fabu yeah. yeah that was the first time i ever yeah. saw but i've been seeing you play now for over 30 years dude i can't believe that. isn't that weird yeah yeah that's amazing and you must have like a painting in your attic a painting yeah of yourself of? that does the aging for you because you're oh. doing very well <laughs> thank you yeah it must be uh you and Eli both have, like, really, you look great. Thank you. You too. You as well. I feel like we look better than the generations. But remember when people, like, that were 30 looked old? Yeah. Like, they looked like 50? Yeah. I, I, I have to pinch myself still, like, trying to figure out. You think it's this... playing music that does it? I think I do it is. so much. I mean, it just keeps us young in our hearts. Yeah. And also, I mean, we just have, um, 
you know, I think artists, if you're able to create, it just really, I don't know, it, it does something for your chemistry, yeah. you know, your molecules. Um, yeah, I think it's really great. And it's been a, it's, I feel like it's kept me young for sure. Yeah. I, uh, I realized I didn't know that Pernalis station or Pernalis station was a place. Yeah. But that's like where Spencer, remember Spencer? Yeah. That's where he used to have a studio. Oh, really? Yep. That's a nice space. I, I was the girl that was Rosie's mom, uh, lived over there at those lofts across oh. from there. You know what okay. I'm talking about? Uh-huh. I do. And I always wondered what the hell that was because they'd have shows there on Saturday nights, like in the parking lot area. Yeah. 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 And so that's what it is. It's a venue. It's a venue. And this is actually indoors. Okay. So yeah. it's got a gorgeous Steinway. And so that was a big point. For, that's awesome. Like selling point for me to do it. And also they're going to do, um, they have a beautiful video production. So they'll live stream it and I'll do the live show and then I'll walk away with this wonderful video as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, how do people get tickets? They just go to your website. Is it amyashley.com? It's, Why didn't it I is amyashley.com okay. and um, tickets are going to go live very soon. Okay. It's so an Eventbrite. Just, okay. This will come out next Tuesday. So will that, will they be up by then? Do you think? Yes. A week from yes. Tomorrow? It's coming out. Okay. I'm going to cool. do it. So I'll on... put the link in the text of this podcast. Okay, great. Well, thank you. I'll, send it, I'll send it to you. Okay. Yeah. January 18th. It should be live. Okay, and yeah. the show is actually February 18th, and the record comes out, I should say again, February 17th. Correct. It's a lot of records coming out February. I feel like everybody that's come on the podcast since the new year has a record coming out February 17th. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, it's just kind of the right time after the new year, you know? Yep. I think people are doing it. There's that sandwich time. In be- like, no one wants, before people would be like, oh, I'll release my record during South By. But then you realize that's the dumbest thing you can do. Get lost, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I actually was ready to release in the fall, but I just thought, you know, um, it would it would have been November, and I was like, we're getting into the holidays, and I just kind of wanted to do a spring record. I've always done spring records, so just kept with that theme, I guess. Yeah. You know, what I realized is that uh, the last EP that I made, I recorded in January, mm-hmm. which is the dumbest time because of Cedar and stuff. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I have, remember, oh yeah, of course you remember Billy White. Billy White of course. Uh, made one of those records. I can't remember nice. which one, but one of those that he made in the 90s, he made like in January. Uh huh. And I remember he couldn't listen to it afterwards because he hated his voice. And it's happening to me with that. I, like now when I hear it, I'm like, what is that weird? Why does my voice have this odd timbre to it that I don't normally have? And it's cedar. Does yeah. it get you? You know, it's very spotty. I'm, I don't really suffer from it. I'll just kind of out of the blue have it, so it's not consistent. Luckily, I'll knock on, knock on wood here. I've gotten, well, I think this is wood too, yeah. or something. I think it's pretend wood. Um, I've gotten it to where I have a year round now. Like there's Man. probably two months not together. They're like a week here and a week there and a week that, that I'm fine. Yeah. But otherwise, I'm always blowing my nose for something. Man, do you do the drops? Because I hear those cedar drops that you can get at PS yes. Pharmacy is like You got to think deal. ahead, though. You do. You, you got you to you totally. be doing your... I've done the thing where I've gotten ready in November, and I've had an amazing allergy season, and then I forget. Yeah. And you try and jump on it, but it's too late. Those yeah. natural things, you really have to... It's not like drugs. Right. Yeah. Right. Um. Okay. So... Uh, when you're playing now, who's playing? Uh, who's playing guitar now? Is it yeah, still Chris so, or no? No, I'm working with Kevin Carroll on oh, yeah. guitar and Glenn McGregor, who's also on the record on bass um, and on drums. And Aubrey, right? Aubrey singing yeah. harmonies. Yep. And then Hector Munoz is playing drums. Hector Munoz. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. He sounds amazing. Who was playing? Wasn't uh, oh, what's his name? I played with him, Seth. Was he playing with you? Seth before, played with me point? for many years. We yeah. had a long time together. Um, I started working with Kyle Thompson, and he's on the record, and J.J. Johnson's on the record. That's funny. I can't remember what song it was, but there was a song where I was like, ah, oh, this is J.J. for sure. Yeah. Another guy that uh, you know, you've been watching and listening to for 30 years of feeling. Yeah. You know what he I mean? As soon as he's playing, you're like, for oh, sure. yeah, that's him. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And we're good friends. We go so so way back and family friends. So yeah, it's so nice to make music with him. Yeah. I haven't seen him in a long time. He's doing good. Yeah, he's it's, doing well. Who's he playing with now? Gary Clark Jr. Yeah. Oh. Oh really? Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it's a great killer band. So. It is. It's uh, that guy John Michael plays bass. 
in that band? I can't remember okay. the name of people in that <laughs> band. I just remember hearing how awesome they do, sound. Do your kids like your music? They do. I think so. Yeah, they play it for their friends. And Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. What do they listen to normally outside of that? You know, it's so funny. They, they each, you know, obviously our music um, and, and what we listen to influences the kids, just like what your parents listen to influence you, you know. Yeah. But they have their own thing, you know. They all, all have their very, they both have their very specific, you know, um, playlist. And when we get in the car, they have to connect to the Bluetooth so they can have their music going. And, right, and right. I love it because it introduces me to new new stuff, especially like keeping me like into what the kids are listening to. I think it's pretty, pretty cool. What is it? Like, what I, are they well, listening to? <laughs> um, my youngest kids. loves. Rosie doesn't listen to anything. I mean, they listen. It's really all over the place. So. SZA is a big one. Man, that Kill Bill song. Do you love that? Oh my God. I'm in love with that song I'd so listen, much. I started over at the end of it every time. Isn't that incredible? It's so um, <laughs> deceivingly dark, you know? It's really dark. And the sweetest melody. I love it. She's so amazing. I saw her at South by. You did? Or no, no, no. I saw uh, her at um, ACL, ACL yeah. last year. And I was expecting, you know, tracks and things. Her band was killer. She was amazing. It was great. You know, that song reminds me of, of one of those songs like, um, that sounds like it should be in Spanish, like Don't Speak by a, by by No Doubt. You know ah. what I'm saying? Like the first time, well, I mean, I'm Cuban, so I grew up like listening to, I've, like Latin music is there, and you can like pick stuff when it's a really dramatic melody. You know, like don't speak. Just sound. It sounds like they took a Spanish hit and made it in English for themselves. Hey, very, very and the, possible. This, the Kill Bill song does that for me too. Yeah, what is it? Because I'm, I'm like, what? It, I, I, there's something familiar about it. I, that melody it just sticks with me. Yeah. Na, 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 na. Yeah. It just. Sound, it's, it, yeah. It's I don't from know. something. But anyway, maybe I love it's from what Kill Bill. Did. I wondered. I wondered if it was maybe from Kill Bill. I like that we're from an era where you just don't Google everything. We're like, I wonder. I don't know if it could. But we could have yeah, looked it up. At any- we probably could have. <laughs> I like a little mystery, don't you? Me too. Me too. Speaking of which, how do you handle social media? Like, how I, I didn't really go through your social media. Yeah, I you feel know, like I, see uh, you on I have a little bit of love hate with it. You know, I think if I wasn't trying to share my music, you know, I would probably not be on as much. You know, but we have to do that. It's the way that we can connect with people in a yeah. massive way. So, you know, I'm on there trying to share that and just try to be myself. You know, um, I'm on Instagram and um, it's at Ames Ashley and Facebook, um, YouTube. That's all I'm doing right now. I know I need to up my game on that. I opened a TikTok account and oh, I, have, you I have one video. It's just of Rosie. <laughs> I don't I've know got, what to do I've on got video. Snapchat I feel like, and TikTok. I do nothing with them. I feel like I, if I go on TikTok, people are going to be like, get out of here, old guy. Go back to Facebook. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do. I <laughs> we do. don't want you here. <laughs> what I need to do is get my kids to like kind of run my Snapchat and TikTok and it'll be huge. Yeah, but I, I believe that. But I, be, I thought that the thing is that it's people are actually connecting with you. Yeah, I always find it when people, people have someone apparently. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. I, I find it to be real weird and sort of like what it's, 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 it's sort of the power that it's shown that it has over the last like, you know, mostly five years or so, six years, yeah. just like it's been very intense. Like the. Yeah. I mean, people like industry looks at your social oh, numbers yeah. <laughs> and it's like important, you know, I'm like, oh, something about that rubs me the wrong way. But I mean, they're, they're trying to uh, move units and sell product. I'm trying to write songs, you know, it's kind of a different, different thing. But what are they selling? Like, that's not like, there's no more albums to sell. Like, what are they doing? <laughs> yeah, I guess they're, I guess they're selling the brand yeah. you know, of the artist. Do you still make CDs? Are you making CDs? I did. I did yeah. a small run of CDs and my goal was to do some vinyl, but I kind of ran out of money. So I'm thinking maybe I'll do, a, you know, like a later sort of issue of some boutique vinyl that I can have just, you know, for myself and for my fans that want to buy it. Yeah. I'm not disparaging the place, but, uh, I work with awesome music foundation and the artist development program. And awesome. we make a record every year with like six artists and we get it done on vinyl. 
and we turned in our masters in December of 2021. Okay. And we will get our albums in February. Wow. Next month. It's that kind of lead time. Yeah. Is is that for everything or <laughs> it's just for vinyl? That, wow. So I need, I need to plan now if I'm going to do it. Oh yeah. Man. It's crazy. Yeah. Um what happened was there was there's a place that does the um uh, Whatever, play, I can, not the lathe, but whatever golden master thing, metal master thing that they make, the the kind of aluminum piece that is the master okay. vinyl that you end up oh, pressing press from. wax. Yeah, yeah. The the place that makes those in America burned down. Oh no! In I think early twenty twenty. Wow. And uh, and crazy. and that set everything back. And then the pandemic, they all closed down for a couple of months. And then right. everybody put out records. <laughs> yeah. And so there's all of those things c- c- like made this great giant bottleneck. I see that. Yeah. yeah. It seems like in every industry, there's just some type of like wait time. Do you get vinyl? I think I have one of Elias's albums on vinyl. Yeah. He has a couple. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of. Yeah, a couple of records on vinyl. Do you guys do you guys listen to music on vinyl? Yeah, definitely. We do both, you know, any and all. You know, some things just sound great yeah. on vinyl, you know, especially the older records. Yeah. It's fun for me. Like I, I, I totally fun, yeah. It's fun to have it. It's fun to go looking for it, and mm-hmm. it's neat that it's real real cheap. Yeah. You know, or it's very, very expensive. It's fun. It, that's the funniest thing is that no one will buy a $10 album from you online, but they'll pay $45 for a vinyl copy of the same 10 songs or 12 songs. Yeah. So well, it's a piece of artwork uh, beyond the music, that's true. which yeah. I love about that. All the liner notes and yeah. the photography and the artwork. It's, you know. How, uh, how often do you write? Are you like a daily writer? Or are you? I'm writing all the time. Um, I'm not writing daily but I, I don't have a schedule like that but um yeah I'm, I'm writing a lot of music all the time especially during the pandemic yeah did you do any live streams or anything like that during? That? I did yeah I did do some of that and um you know I just kind of felt like you know I I, I needed to perform still and I felt yeah. like people needed to hear music and wanted yeah. to connect in that way so it was good I did a few shows um it's not something that I love to do you know, but it was necessary for, for, um, I think just for music in general to keep it kind of going. Yeah. It's funny. I really noticed that what it did for people during that time. I didn't, I, I yeah. kind of forgot. And it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't until like people were like, man, I really like, I really look forward to this. And you know, it didn't sound that great or anything. Right. <laughs> You're like, wow, you must really, <laughs> like, you really want to connect with a music and the person that makes it really badly yeah it's great it was important yeah i think for sure yeah um there was a uh, okay so you don't you don't write all do you record at your house do you have a recording setup do you we, guys? we do it's more just so, sort of demoing stuff you know and we kind of got that together that was a positive with the pandemic so we sort of got that little home studio oh, yeah. together you know i don't i don't have anything that i would release from there uh, from that home studio but it's just great to to track some stuff and kind of see listen back and and see you know where you are do people get Elias to come and play like on albums and stuff he does some, there, yeah that was a, a thing that i noticed with a lot of my studio musician friends was that all of a sudden they could do tons of more studio work during that yeah. time from their own home yeah definitely definitely a lot more like um i guess ways to collaborate you know through that innovation for sure yeah um what made you do uh what made you do dancing in the dark you know it's funny i that song for some reason has been kind of gnawing at me for a long time and I always knew that there was some sort of melancholy situation with that song, with with the melody and with the lyrics, and that it was sort of masked behind this very poppy, poppy yeah. production, you know? Um, I just kind of always wanted to do it. And, and when we were in the studio, we were actually working on a Burt Backrock tune. And, you know, I was, for me to do a cover, I have to make it my own, you know? And so I kind of was like, hey, Robert, let's let's kind of rethink this. 
um, I'd like to do Dancing in the Dark. And he was like, oh, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and uh, I don't think he really got it, like, at first, you know? <laughs> he's like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, so let's let's think about it. So the next time we got together, we just kind of played it, acoustic guitar, together. And the minute I started singing, and he was like, oh, I get it. I got it. Yeah. I got it. And this yeah. is how this song should have been recorded originally. Um, and I was like, well. That poor song, man. Yeah. It did so much great stuff for him, but it also, like, it's that snare drum in that song makes me want to stab Max Weinberg. Yeah. Even though I know it's not his fault. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's it's awful. not that Yeah, that whole record is yeah. interesting. Um, I mean, yeah, it did a lot for his career. But it, you know, he's just a masterful songwriter. And I think that song is a great example of it, especially done in a very like stripped down way like that. Yeah. I, uh, I play with the Bodines when their guy can't be there. Oh yeah. There are other, like the harmony singer, acoustic guitar guy lives in Australia. Oh wow. Sometimes he wants to go home and they'll have like three shows. So I'll do them in his place and they do, uh, I'm on fire. And it's mm, the same, I love it's that the same one. kind That's of thing. One. It's like a whole like different yeah. take on that song. I thought about doing that one, yeah. but dancing dancing in the dark, I just knew that that was what I needed to do. Yeah. Yeah. I was I I uh I wasn't sad, but I, I was waiting for the sax to come in at the end. Oh yeah. Like, it's like really of all songs not to have a sax guy on. We had <laughs> we we ended up doing I wanted it really sparse and, and I wanted something that had this sadness to it. And so we thought about accordion and we have Cullen Fox. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and he just nailed it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that dude. Yeah. I saw he just got married. I know. What an exciting thing for him. Beautiful. I, uh, I toured with him like I was uh, 15 years ago or something with Ian Moore. Uh, we were both in his band, but like he and I, I sang all the harmonies. So like before Ian came down for the rehearsals, he and I spent a couple of weeks working on our stuff together. And I, I really loved, uh, I love hanging out with that guy. He's a sweet, sweet guy. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know him. I just kind of know his music and got him to come play on the song. That's good. So, but I, but I do, um, I did see where he got married and that's always a great thing. Um, if Ian ever tells you a story that I threatened his life, Cullen. Yeah. It was only because I was really tired. Oh man. <laughs> and he wouldn't stop improvising along with the jazz on the <laughs> We were looking for a parking space. People love that guy. Like, yeah. People just yeah. love Cullen. I hear and that. like when I went on tour with Ian Moore, people come like that guy came home with like six instruments that people just gave him like a melodica, wow. uh, a flute. Someone gave him a flute. So one day we have a day off. It was a late night before I was grumpy and we're driving and, and, and Cullen's like soloing along with the jazz on the radio. And it was just like, hey, man. It's too much. It's like, hey, man, can you cool it with flu, bro? <laughs> He's like, yeah, no problem. Oh, Puts man. the flute away, pulls out a melodica and starts doing the same thing. Oh. And that's when I was like, dude, I'm going to kill you. You were losing your you mind. you make another sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, wow, what a great uh, guy. There was a song with horns I made some notes about uh, at the end. Yeah, it's well. I've got there's a couple oh, yeah, of songs. Yeah. We're all made of stars. Oh, we were all made of stars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is Mike St. Clair. Okay. And he's. Um, I loved the way that like that whole approach was. It was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And that bringing it back rock again. We were kind of going down that road a yeah. little bit, taking a real earthy verse, and then sort of twisting it into sort of more of a seventies kind of groove thing. Yeah, I love that. It's it, man. Thank these you. are great songs. Thank I've, you. I, this this podcast is going to come out next week. People can't access these songs, but none of them are available right now. Not no. yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm waiting until you know that light switch on the 17th. Okay, so yeah. no pre single. To no, warm up. no, I decided not to do that. I just want to do it all at one time. Yeah, I like Charlie Faye. She's so sweet. She's really cool. She is. She's yeah. so sweet. She's been really helpful. Yeah, she's a really uh, she's a great artist and also a great. Uh, business thinker yeah you know very smart very smart very creative like thinks outside the box a lot which i think is really awesome um so your show is going to be full band it's going to be full band yeah it's gonna be full band and um i will have a couple of special guests come eli's gonna sit in on irene which he plays yeah on and um i'm hoping to uh i figured that was him yeah, yeah. Be weird if you had a different sax guy on there, huh? Yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. 
that would, that would be a I weird. just heard him on that song, though, you know? Yeah. And he nailed it. It was really kind of that Tony Visconti kind of production we were we were kind of going for on that song. You a fan of Tony Visconti? Well, I mean, I love that Bowie record, you know? Yeah. And, uh, he also produced one of Alejandro's records, which yeah. Eli played on. Yeah. Which has a lot of that Black Star kind of thing yeah. going. And I, I love that record. Oh, that Bowie record. Yeah. That record, man. That's Jesus. just one of my top records. It's one of the greatest pieces of art I think ever made. Nobody Agree. documents their demise. Can you going imagine? back to the beginning of our conversation. Yeah. Nobody actually like document like the opening line of the whole record is look at me, I'm in heaven. Like Jesus, oh what, how do you do that? I don't the know. Greatest artist of all time. He gave everything for the art. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I did. Remember that? You, you know that? Uh, have you ever seen it? For that uh, Modern Rocks Gallery place over on the east side? I don't think like so. Like a photo place. Oh, uh, yes, gallery. I have. Yes, yes. They did this Bowie uh, exhibit, and I interviewed the dude that owns it. He was a, a guitar player in that band, Modern English. Oh yeah. Uh, nice. And um, and he had all these outtakes from his last shoot mm. from two days before he died. Right, he wow. did this photo yes. shoot where he looked great. It? He's wearing the suit. Amazing. He looked, he yeah, he doesn't look like a guy that's going to die no. in a few days by any means. Mm-mm. And I know that he already knew he was going to die, so it wasn't a big deal. But he was like, "Look at this outtake from there. Do you notice anything weird?" And you see, he had a cigarette, like a lit cigarette behind his behind his hip. Wow. And I was like, "Man, the guy, <laughs> Bowie, he went all the way, man. He did. Yeah. Wow." <laughs> Yeah. So amazing. I guess once you find out, they're like, hey, you're not going to make it. You're like, well, then give me back those cigarettes. Right. Please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He really made smoking look good. Yeah. He really did. Made like I used to smoke. At, I mean, now I'd smoke this, whatever that's is, juuling. Yeah. Or vaping, which is kind of sad. Um, but <laughs> at least I don't smoke anymore. Yeah. I mean, good for but you. It, he's one of the reasons I smoke. Yeah. I mean, it, he looks great. Yeah. He looked really good. We all want to be... <laughs> I tried smoking a little bit. Yeah. Um, we would do sort of the, uh, me and my friends, we would do sort of the after dinner cigarette, you know, kind of the European thing. Yeah. You know, but luckily it never really took hold. Yeah. Do you yeah. still talk to Pam much? I do some. Um, we have a, we're playing phone tag a little bit right now. Where does she live? She's in Copenhagen. She has two, two boys. Wait, in Denmark? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. She married a Dane. Oh. But she's still one of oh. my best. Oh, no, he's a sweetheart. Um, and we're we're just soul sisters, you know, kind yeah, of forever. So. Definitely. Yeah, she's awesome. And she's just. Does um, she still do music at all? She's not really doing music right now. I wish she would. She had an interesting relationship to being a musician. Yeah. She it made her real mad a lot, I remember, and frustrated. And not in the way that other people did. She always seemed like she had to get through it and then get to the next thing, whatever that was going to be. Yeah, I can, I mean, I I can see that struggle. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. It's weird. It's weird going on as long as we have just to keep on making music. Yeah. I mean, we just do it. But it feels good, right? I have to do it. Yeah. It's, it's completely that vital life force in my life. What, I know that you do a lot of non-court mandated community service. Uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Just so people know that you're doing it out of your own volition and not because some guy told you to. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I you know, kind of learned the ropes when I was at VH1 because I got real involved with VH1 Save the Music Foundation. Uh-huh. And I was working to restore music education programs for youth at risk across the country. And that was just a gift to be able to serve those kiddos. And yeah. it just really made me realize that I needed to be involved in that in, in some way. And I, and I have been, um, it's been part of my life journey. You Are know? you still in that? In- well, I'm not, I'm not, I went, I mean, I'm still in it now in a completely different capacity. When I moved back to Austin, I was at Meals on Wheels of Central Texas. And um, I did that for about 12 years as part, I mean, I worked for them, you know, as part okay. of their, um, their uh, sort of senior management team there. Um, and then I went on to now where I'm, I have my day job to help pay for my music career and my kids and insurance and stuff. Um, I'm working at the city of Austin at Austin oh, energy. Awesome. In, um, environmental uh, justice, social and environmental justice programs around electric vehicles and making sure that people have access to technology and that, you know, underserved community members are not left behind as Austin is kind of, you know, taking off into this modern, modern, uh, transformation. That's a tough thing, and I feel like it's uh, 
people came out and I, I feel like I feel like the rollout and the branding of helping others was misbranded when people came out to like, I'm a socialist and we're going to, and you're like, no, 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 don't say it. No, no, no. <laughs> no <Right. one> will, <laughs> just tell them the stuff that it does. And they'll be like, oh yeah, I love that. <laughs> don't use the S word. You're so I right. Feel like yeah. I, I really feel like they, like, you know, people with good intentions ruined it with branding. <laughs> you, you have to be careful. Like when we're out in, in the community talking about like environmental, um, you know, uh, conscious <laughs> of our society we really don't like focus on that language at all no. you know we really don't talk about you know climate change you know yeah because it's like people taking the medicine they don't want to take the medicine but when you show them a fast cool car that's like running on sunshine yeah that's cool i want to do that Save oh and by the gas. way you're saving money on gas and you're making the air a little bit cleaner yeah you can't argue with that you know, but the thing is, is that, uh, you know, Austin is a perfect city. We, we are a beta tester for technology and, and all things sort of new, as, as you can you know, know, being here for many years, you, you've seen this transition. And what happens is that there's a constant like um, practice where people and communities are left behind and they don't get the benefits of all this stuff. And so that's really what I'm doing. I'm working with young students. I'm working with community leaders to make sure that they are part of the benefits of all this change that's happening because it's going to change. Yeah. There's, there's one thing for certain and that's change. Yeah. So let's make sure that like we are working with communities that are here to, to mitigate displacement. Yeah. You know, the history and the generations of families that have lived here in Austin, that they can stay here yeah, and that they can thrive in this economy, you know? So. Yeah. What part of town do you guys live in? We live in uh, Mueller. Oh, so nice. We live in that oh, green yeah, you used, neighborhood. Were you neighbors with a when he lived over there? Yes, yes, yes. We lived a couple of blocks away from each other. We would run into each other at the pool and at the park with our kids. Yeah. He's got a great child. I saw him yesterday. Yeah. yeah. He's, he must be getting Vigo. up there now. Yeah, he's 13. Yeah. It's right in there. He's hanging out with Duran Duran a couple weeks ago. This is really cool. Wow. Wears a leather jacket. Awesome. Looks at me like I'm an idiot. Drives uh, me nuts. Just like Anar looks at me. <laughs> hey, you know, the apple doesn't far, fall far from the tree. No. Do you see that? Do you see yourself and your kids? And do you and Eli go like, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Don't do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're awesome. They're wonderful. It's weird. It's a scary time. I think it would be a scary time to be a kid nowadays. I think so. I mean, it's it's been really, you know, interesting watching these kids sort of navigate, you know, the best they can, the yeah. pandemic and and all of the other things you I know, didn't that even they're dealing with. I think about that. I just meant just in general times. Well, we, general times yeah. and and social media and all that. It's really hard. For sure. For sure. And uh, as parents, you know, we just try to uh, have as open of conversation, um, open, you know, dialogue with them to uh, just sort of sort of help, you know. Yeah. I have a friend who who was telling me the other day that his his son, who's like 11, was like being bullied so bad at school. Like he heard him at night, like, uh, you know, like crying, like at three in the morning went to the bathroom and like heard something in the room and opened the door and there was this yeah. kid like shaking and crying and having a full bone yeah. panic attack. I yeah. couldn't imagine what, you know, Yeah, you know, it's what, hard. Yeah, it is hard. I mean, and the cyber bullying thing is real yeah. and, and my daughters have unfortunately experienced that before. And that sucks. It's just, you know, it's kind of like the social media in particular takes the filter off you know, yeah. and it's, it's difficult and it's a lot to live up to. And so we really try to do our best to help the girls just keep it real, you know? Yeah. So, but they, I mean, it's been a lot of up and downs, but, um, you know, they're surviving. Yeah. Thriving. <laughs> That's good. I, there was a show I saw you were doing in March. Oh, Agueros. You're doing Agueros. Yeah. Under March the 1st. Tree. I'll go there to that. Yay. I love going to those. Oh, thank you. I'm excited about that. I haven't done it yet, so. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have. It's great. And I love Sun Radio. Yeah, me so, too. So great. Me too. Are you going to do some stuff with them? Something? Well, I mean, it's their broadcast, yeah. right? And so hopefully, oh, yeah. um, hopefully there'll be more opportunities. <laughs> Duh. Um, 
what else? Like when you're putting out this record, like at this point, you made a whole record, which is something that people don't really make. Anar and I were talking this morning. Uh, we work with the Awesome Music Foundation, the Artist Development Program, and through that, we end up working, making a record with all these different artists. And we just had a session over the weekend with this guy, Jake Lloyd. He's awesome. Like, cool. Just amazing. I love this program. How awesome. Yeah, it's really great. It's really, it's a lot of fun. And, 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 uh, we were talking about like, there's one of our artists has like just presented all of these mid tempo songs. And we're like, what? Like, can we, you want to do, cause they were recording two songs. Like, is there another one that we can have like a up feeling? And there's like, there's no need for that. And there's artists now that are literally just like mid tempo artists. And you're looking at me. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, I, no, I'm no, totally no, no. a mid tempo artist. Me too. Yeah. I mean, I, to slow. I, I push myself to, to rock out. Like I'll, I'll write a song starting with the drum machine at a certain tempo just so that I'm there. Yeah, and not. no, I think it's good to have, uh, good to have that variety, but you also have to, you know, be true to yourself, right? Right. But so what I was going to say is that I also, he was like, he was like, is no one telling these people like when they're going to make a record, like, Hey kid, you need a rocker. And I was like, I don't think people even make records anymore. Yeah. Like who's making records? Who's yeah. making a whole record? right now i know i've even stopped yeah i mean i had to make that decision and i really did go back and forth i almost just released the first three tunes and you know would do later a full release of everything i'm glad you're i'm glad there's still people that are out there going like no i'm making an album remember yeah (laughs) yeah there's like a concept behind this you know what is it um well i mean it's just the songs it's a collection of songs the concept behind this this grouping of songs. She's having a dream. Oh, <laughs> girl, keep dreaming. She's so sweet. Um, okay, but it's not like a concept record. I was like, what did I miss something? Well, I think, you know, it really is like, I the way that I write is I do write sort of in a collection of songs, you know, and they start out, I'll usually write, I, I write a lot of songs that I just kind of throw away, but those that are keepers, it's usually writing in twos and threes. Kind of. Okay. And yeah. that's just sort of a pattern I've always had. Um, and these songs just all fit together. Mm-hmm. Do you know yeah, what I, I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. So it, it just felt like right that I did this album, you know, Do you as opposed e- to singles. Right. Do you ever, uh, like when you're making an album, just because you have so many songs, like is there any, like for, like some 90s song that never got any, like you're like, oh wait, this will work on this record in this new Yeah, era? I mean, I, I will say so... Irene is one of those. That's one of my New York songs, but I never recorded it. Okay. And I started playing it with the band and we kind of re-envisioned it right. with this record. Yeah. And I knew that it it had a place here with these other songs. Yeah. So. Turned out good. It's, it's the second song, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. What's well, The first song is uh, Down to the Sound. Yeah. What? That's a really like... It's really cool because it's almost like two completely different recordings. Yeah. Like the verse to chorus transition Mm -hmm. is, it's really exciting to listen to. Well, thank you. And it's tough too. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it was a way for me to sort of paint this situation that I was dealing with, which is trying to understand when, when both of my parents died, they died about eight months apart and, um, I just was trying to figure out how to communicate with them, you know, and, and just this burning like need to understand where they are. Are they okay? And I started getting dreams and they were so wonderful. And I totally <clears throat> realized that I was, you know, connecting with my parents. And this song is really about sort of um, connecting with the other side, you know, like how it's, there's a fine line between this dimension and the other dimension. Yeah. And, um, you know, sort of being in that space and being aware of that. It's, it's definitely song has a, a real sort of spiritual sort of journey yeah. to it. And a kick-ass chorus. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing is like, you've really been able to explore. That's what I think is great about people that are able to write in a pop format. Not like, uh, not like modern pop, but like in this destruct, the Burt Bacharach, the Paul McCartney, the, you know, Amy Mann, Sam Phillips, like all of these kind of people um, that you, you can deliver really devastating news and really talk about very difficult things 
and it'll take the listener maybe the third listen to be like, what is he? Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? I thought this I was about. That. That. Yeah, I love it too. I definitely think that's my style for sure. Yeah. I don't like to be very exacting in, in like sort of the lyrical content in that you're going to walk away and know exactly what this is about. I want people to have their own understanding and their own connection and their own meaning yeah. with that song or with the songs rather. Yeah. You were a big Jeff Buckley fan, weren't you? Yes. I love yeah. Jeff Buckley. Did, were you on that podcast that Jeff did, that Jeff Haley did? I need to be. I love Jeff Haley because of course I have a Jeff Buckley story. You do? What is I it? do. Oh, don't tell it on my show. No, I got, I got a show. Respect. I'll tell you off, off uh, yeah, tell recording. Me off okay. <laughs> okay. Jeff, if you're listening to this, uh, obviously Haley, not Buckley. I love Jeff Haley so much. But Jeff, if you're listening to this, you saw what I just did. <laughs> that was very cool of me. I heard that. I heard that one. The one that, that I did. did. Yes. Yeah. I've heard a bunch of them and I, I think they're great. His, did you Chris listen to Searle's the, one was so cute. Oh, I was yeah. like, oh, the, I love the, them. The drummer guy, Matt Johnson. Oh yeah, I did hear that. I did hear that. And I have a Matt Johnson story that I could you tell you. Tell me the Matt Johnson story. So yeah, when I Sorry, was, uh, yeah, when I was in, um, New York. So, um, I hired Matt to play a gig with me and I was doing a bunch of showcasing. Um, this was going to be at the living room and, um, the, I guess two weekends before our gig, I went to, um, Vermont, uh, to go snowboarding, never been snowboarding. Everyone was like, Oh, you went, you were a surfer growing up. You will be fine. You got this. So I had a lot of confidence. Anyway, I got on this mountain and I went down and I did pretty darn good you know, on my first few times down. So, but I was exhausted. So I went back to the lodge and my body was saying, you're done, you're done, you're done. But my heart was like, Oh, one more time, right. you know? And so I did that one more time, uh, uh, also with some peer pressure from some of my friends out there, you got to do it. And I wanted to work on my stop, which is a turn, you mm -hmm. know, you sort of turn into the stop and I did. And I, I just, it was too hard and there was not much powder. And I just, um, I did like a 180 and I landed on my arm and I heard it just go, oh, click. And I broke my arm and it was in the midst of all this showcasing that my manager had set up for me. And anyway, so I, I couldn't play and I had to call Matt Johnson and I told him, you know, um, I'm so sorry to, to let you know, I'm going to have to postpone these gigs for like, you know, six weeks until I can hold my guitar and play. Oh, he got so mad at me. He just, he flipped out and he was like, you know, you, that could have been spinal. And he said, you, you know, if you're a serious artist, you cannot take a risk and get on a mountain and, and do that, you know? And so he was really serious. And I guess, you know, he experienced the loss of Jeff Buckley yeah, yeah, realizing, yeah. you know, he yeah. went swimming out there in that Mississippi and didn't make it back. So I guess that was maybe a little PTSD for him. Sure. So that, I, that, that's my Matt Johnson story. We did not end up playing together. <laughs> I, he lives in, in Bastrop now. Hmm. So cool. You, you can make the dream come true. Yeah. A lot of dudes, look, the drummer from Styx lives here. Yeah. He's apparently the greatest drummer in the world. I saw a magazine article that said he's the greatest drummer in the world. Wow. Yeah. I don't know how you the measure greatest? that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think Brandon Temple is, for me, he's amazing. for my money. He's amazing. I love I love J.J. Johnson, too. Yeah. Also, it's apples I mean, and oranges. No, it, it is. I never have a best anything. Yeah. You ever watch the Grammys or anything like that? I go in and out of it, yeah. Do you think it's weird how many people are on the Grammy board now that we are friends with? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. The local chapter. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any interest in doing that? I mean, I might be. My my husband's on it. Oh, he is. To, yeah, he doesn't really. He's not active with it that much. Um, I mean, I think I might be interested in doing that. I don't know. Yeah. They asked me like ten years ago, and I was just like, "What? No, I don't." Yeah. The one thing about it is like all the music care stuff that you can do and you can you can push legislation. I thought it was just like I don't I don't I don't even watch it. Yeah. Like, why would, why yeah. would I even I've always had such a weird disconnect with that sort of like main like I've never watched the Grammys and not at least like fifteen times been like, Who is that? Yeah. Like they're like the number one artist of the world. I'm like, who even in the nineties, like I'd just be like, I don't even know who this is. Yeah. How do you keep up with new music outside of your new kid, outside of your kids? Like, do you? I think that's look the best way. Um, I think I really, I don't know how. I guess you know, it just comes across my my radar with my kiddos, and you know. Do you listen to music on Spotify and stuff like that? Do you have one of those? I do. I mean, I listen mostly on Apple. You okay. know, iTunes is is my main source. Um, but you know, um, I will listen to on YouTube as well. 
just kind of various platforms like I think everybody does. You yeah. Know? What do you find yourself listening to these days? Like when you're like, oh, I'm going to put this on. Yeah, I mean, I think it just depends on what I'm doing. I mean, I listen to a lot of different things. I mean, I've been listening to um, Heart of um, was it Heart on a Wheel, um, Linda Ronstadt. Sure. Yeah, Heart. yeah. It's such a great. Heart like a wheel. Heart, heart like a wheel. Yeah, not heart on a wheel. <laughs> That's all right. Heart like a wheel's beautiful record. Um, Coat of many colors. Dolly Parton. You know, I love Lana Del Rey. Um, I listened to uh, Phoebe Bridgers, of course. I've been listening to her before she blew up, and yeah, I'm so glad she blew up. She's amazing. Um, I love this artist named Frank Ocean. He oh, really yeah. speaks to my heart. You know, yeah. Um, if I'm cooking, I like to listen to Casey Musgraves. Okay, you know. Um, I don't know. I like to listen to, I listen to a lot of Bowie and, you know, sometimes, yeah. you know, it'll be just kind of a Stones kind of night. Yeah. You know, I just yeah. like good music. Yeah, me too. Um, I, uh, I have a lot of Bowie times. I've been trying to make, uh, over the last couple of years, I've tried to make myself listen to a full album of something. Yeah. yeah. I, I was doing it's it every nice day when I was Lionel making thing. dinner. Yeah. That keeps you in, yeah. in check. Because it's too hard with all these, like the streaming services, I find myself like, I'll listen to like even half a song and be like, oh, bah, bah, bah. like it, it's like short attention span theater takes over and all of a sudden I'm just like, I can't even get through a song. I'm like, oh, but the cars have a song that's also like, you know. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Our, all of us, our attention spans are just shot. Yeah. As a music fan and like, as, I, like I've uh, had this conversation with some of our friends who have like, you know, like Tony Scalzo and Miles Zuniga who you know, sold a lot of records and made their money through their mailbox stuff. Yeah. I've never really been like this. People have either given me a bunch of money to go do something that failed or I just go out and play and that's how I do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so when I got the streaming services, I wasn't offended by any means. I was like when I finally got Spotify, like when iTunes was a thing, I was just like, I can buy music in my underwear at 530 in the morning like yeah whenever i want but then all of a sudden having like access to anything yeah. in the world as a music fan is just so exciting but it's also made my ability to focus on one thing which has been like the podcast has been great for that cuz i'll listen to someone's album you know one to five times you know what i mean yeah depending on the album yeah. listen to yours three <laughs> i did Three whole thank times. You. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad. I listened to it when she sent it to me, and I listened to it twice today. Aww. It is Love beautiful. It. Thank you. Uh, this album is called Sometimes a Woman is King. And uh, this, that song itself is great. Thank you. Yeah. What's the story behind that? You know, that's just a, a song that's, um, I would say, in solidarity, solidarity with women. Yeah. You know, it really is about... Um, Women who are leaders, single moms, yeah. you know, women who are out there um, kind of even quietly, you know, yep. just just killing it, you know. It's also, I wrote it for my, my girls too, you know, just so that they can really embrace Aspire, sort yeah. of, yeah, sort of their inner, you know, uh, strength. Yeah. I'm always amazed by my my friends that are women that... Uh, are able to push that platform forward through example. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and a lot of women just don't have a choice and then they just, you know, completely can blow you away. Yeah. You know, it's also, you know, for me, um, I have had so many wonderful role models, my mother yeah, yeah, and then other people who have been mothers in my life. Yeah. Um, that have just meant the world to me and, and been, you know, part of, of, you know, why I am and who I am, this person that I am today from, from those ladies that I aspire to be like. Yeah. I, I, yeah, we're lucky to have those people in our lives. Yeah. It's funny because there's certain, there's certain dudes from those times, but like even my grandpa who was like this stoic dude, that's him in that picture, super cool. Mm. And super influential on my life as far as like a work ethic and, and being interested in what you're doing and uh, and taking it seriously is a total sexist. 
you know, <laughs> but it, yeah. it was because of his, the time. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It was he that, couldn't get hip. It was that era. I mean, it still exists today. It's still a little bit of a man's world. Yeah. Um, you know, but I mean, you just kind of have to move forward, you know, and try to try to just lift each other up and, uh, yeah. you know, just kind of create that, I don't know, equality and equity for women. Um, you know, it takes sort of all of us working together to do that. Yeah. I feel like over the last few years, there've been some real steps in, Mm -hmm. in that taken. Yeah. I mean, I think so. That's why the song I think just came so easily. Yeah. Just seeing that and, you know, um, I mean, I, I feel, I feel blessed in so many ways. There's been a lot of men who have helped me in my life, who have supported me and believed in me. My dad always told me, you can do whatever you want to do and be whoever you want to be. And I, and I had that. Um, so just kind of more of that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I mean, I feel like I've always been around pretty strong women. I mean, just even like looking back on the last 20 years of being in a band, I mean, I've, I can't believe this, but I've been in a band with Trish Murphy for 20 years. Wow. Isn't that weird? Yeah. That Skyrocket has been around for 20 years? That Skyrocket has been around for 20 years, man. That, I can't believe it. I mean, yeah. More than 20 years. 22 years. It'll be 22 years this September, I think. Amazing. Amazing, right? Yeah. Um, But uh, there's, I I even, I have a band of women. Mm Mm-hmm. A a band of all women. Yeah. Except for me. I'm the dude. I love that. In the band, yeah. yeah. And it's uh, it's Kathy Valentine, and she's cool. a badass, like example of a of a human being, even. Yeah. Not just a woman, but really someone who's excelled through. You know what's funny is, uh, did you do you know she wrote a book, and whatever in that book, yeah. we, there's a lot of sexism, obviously in the world, but in the rock business of being sure. a, a woman showing up to a gig and you know all this stuff, but all of the sexism. Uh, that she experienced, and I got this from her book, and and even a couple of other people that I've talked to that have written books as well from that era. All that stuff is kind of like the sexism didn't come from the fellow musicians, right? Like they were all super supportive and all that stuff, but it was the business people that were totally creepy business. and weird or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I feel like in our musical family, mm-hmm. we've all kind of like supported each other and held each other up and agree yeah. yeah yeah for sure you know um and there's just so many more women like just for for example yes. in the austin scene yes you know when pam and i started out you know there were there weren't a it's lot like of you women guys doing and michelle it. solberg yeah and sarah hickman yep and two not two nice girls i mean yeah but it's it's really exploded and, and i welcome that you know yeah yeah it really has i'm i'm very uh i'm very happy about that i'm glad that you're raising conscious young women Thank you. You know, people that have a healthy idea of life. You went to, uh, do you have a place in Galveston? We have a place in Port Aransas. Oh, okay. A little condo that we rent out. And um, yeah, we sold my parents' place in Galveston. Just as you were talking earlier in the interview, just to care for my parents, we had to have those finances. Right. Um, but Eli and I, we, you know, growing up in Houston and Galveston area, you know, the, the sea has me, yeah. you know, and I, ha- I have to be near it. I have to go and renew that as often as possible. Me so, too. I'm sure you were, the, you were Houston. Houston yeah, yeah, too. yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, we, we got a place down there. We, we get down there as often as possible. It's, yeah. I've, I've, <laughs> I've had girlfriends that have been like, oh man, we got to go to Galveston. They're like, sure. They've never been there before. And they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is wrong with oh, you? I love Galveston. I know. I, I well, yeah, I know. I would rather go there than than Nassau. Yeah, I know. There's, and it's, it's not the beauty; it's the connection that I have to that place. It's a very soulful place. Yeah, it is a soulful place. Yeah. Did you? Uh, one last thing before. Do you know Tony Camel? I don't think so. Do it's I? Wooden Wire was his band. Mm-mm. Um, I'm going to send you a link. He did a fantastic. He did a record that's uh, a concept record. Of all these characters on the Gulf Coast. Oh, wow. And then he did a podcast where he went and talked to all these people in Galveston. Like, just kind of like how Galveston's that weird kind of like place people go to get lost. And there's like, yeah. you don't know who you're to. It could be Fred, Dur- or not Fred Durst, Robert Durst. <laughs> Fred Durst. <laughs> it could be Fred Durst from Limp Bizkit hey. or Robert Durst the murderer. Yeah. 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 No, there's definitely a lot of, um, I don't know, 
There's a lot of stuff Mystery going on there. Mystery yeah. Galveston, and I love that mystical piece of Galveston. It's it's awesome. Do you play down there at that old quarter place? I don't. I want to. Oh, I saw you're playing at the Bugle Boy. I am. I I'll like be, that place. Yeah. I'm, I'll be there in June. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be there in June. In June. All week. <laughs> um, well, Amy, this has been great talking to you. This album, Sometimes a Woman is King, uh, comes out February 17th, produced by the great Robert Harrison, featuring her fantastic band and JJ. Yeah. Who's fantastic as well. Yes. And Sanchez and Chris Gebbard. You know, Chris is in Skyrocket now. He's officially Oh, he's in. so good. Yeah. He was a sub for 17 years. And yeah. then finally, <laughs> finally, finally got the call. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, we don't lose a lot of people in that band. I'm sure not. It's, I, it's a group of lovely people. Absolutely. It's, you know what it is? It's the people that keep keep it going. Yeah. That yeah. keep us there. Much respect to everybody in that band, for yeah. sure. Um, Amy... I love talking to you. I'm glad. Aww. I'm glad that you made this record, and I wish you a lot of luck with it. And um, I'm gonna come see you play at some point, if not at your record release at Wero's. I don't know if Skyrocket's playing that night. Well, please come. And I love talking to you, and just just love you to death. Love you too. I can't believe I've been watching you play for over 30 years. I know. We've been we've been together for a long time. Yeah. I was sitting here thinking. I remember when I first met you. I don't know if you remember this, but. Um, we did a gang vocal on Sarah Hickman's yep. record I at Mark Hallman's studio at Congress House. And I remember you walking in, just magic. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you walking in, reeking of weed. Maybe, but <laughs> yeah. probably. But no, I just remember you were so sweet and just oh. we connected just immediately and been friends ever since. Yeah. So I love that. I guess I don't think I met you. I remember just being blown away by by Fabu before Hush. I, you know what? I also remember this really funny story Dave told me from Fabu and Hush. When you guys changed your name, he said, uh, he was like, man, it's not like Fabu was that bad of a name, but just like one time someone introduced us as Sabu. Oh, it's a terrible <laughs> that name. It made me laugh so hard. Tabu, Sabu. That's I think I remember that. I called you guys Sabu. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh so hard. Yeah, we we were going to uh, change our name. It was a temporary name. It was the first party that we played. It was called Fabu. The party okay. was called Fabu. Oh, so we okay. played there. It's our first gig. And um, that's why we named ourselves Fabu. But we realized we needed to change it. And uh, then we got uh, Story and Vanity Fair with James McMurtry. You know, wow. And we were like, shit, we can't change our name now. Right. We're married to this name. So we just went with it. <laughs> That's so funny. I, I loved the name because I had a friend who was real, like, uh, you know, like real hip talker guy. Uh -huh. And instead of saying something was fabulous, he would be like, that's strictly fabu. And uh -huh. I always thought that was so funny. <laughs> so when you guys, I, thought, I was like, oh, cool. Someone finally is using that for something. Um, and then it became Hush. Can you still find that? Is that music out there? We never released anything officially. We did a recording with Billy, and there are some bootleg copies out there with Hush. I thought now, that Fabu, they... there's, there's, um, we do have, it's hard to find. I must have had the Hush stuff just from being close Probably. with Billy at that time. Yeah. I think we sold a few off the bandstand, but it was not. But it's not online. Like people can't, no one put it up on SoundCloud somebody, yet? Somebody has a, some, okay. of, some of those songs on SoundCloud. Um, but, you know, it's just kind of a rough kind of kind of thing huh i'm gonna go listen to it and see if it's yeah. as amazing as i thought because i remember just thinking you guys were like this man they're gonna be huge like you guys just all sang great your songs were great you were beautiful you seemed like a family on stage like there was a vibe it was a great time yeah, yeah. it was a great group yeah. fabu and hush both really just again awesome people hush was more up the like the professional version of fabu that's right. what i always felt like like if people a started, edgier, yeah no one wore shorts anymore right like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we were getting it together player. a little bit who was in that in hush was, um scotty gibson oh uh, right yeah oh yeah. i haven't seen him in a long time i know i saw him i guess when i was living in new york he was recording music and like country music and oh. sang back up on his project. Did JJ play in that band in Hush? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we had different we had different Souls. iterations of it. No, we had um, JJ Rob Hooper. Oh yeah. 
uh, Michael Viegas played oh, yeah. at some point. Um, Conrad Meissner mm-hmm. played a little bit. He was more the Fabu. He was more of our Fabu drummer. Um, but yeah, it was it was um, right because JJ I... and uh, Rob primarily. Okay. Yeah. I love Rob. He was in San Francisco now. Huh? I know. Yeah. I love him too. Yeah. Well, Amy, this has been great. Thank you. I have a great one. Everyone can find Amy at amyatchley.com. Go to her her release show at this cool ass place. Obviously, I saw pictures of it. I should have just gone over there. But Perdinalis Station, Saturday, February 18th. Go to amyatchley.com for tickets and information on that. And uh, sometimes a woman just came, comes out on the 17th. You just All right. as I Thank breathe, you. Take me to the field where we dream. That was Amy Ashley. Her gorgeous new record, Sometimes a Woman is King, drops on February 17th. She is celebrating with a release show Saturday, February 18th at Perdinalis Station. Go to amyatchley.com for all of your Amy Ashley needs. I'll put a link to the, for the tickets for the show in the, uh, in the text of this podcast. And uh, I really want to thank Amy for coming by. It's always great to catch up with her. I hope I get to go and hang out with her and Elias sometime. I do. <laughs> I do. I want to hang out with friends. That's my thing right now. I'm trying to reach out. And go hang out with friends. Maybe I shouldn't have gone to Houston for a week. But maybe I'll hang out with Houston friends. Just hanging out with friends. That's what it's all about, right? Gang, don't forget when you're checking out amyatchley.com, you can subscribe to this podcast wherever it is that you find podcasts, be it uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Overcast, Stitcher, all the places. And if you go to the Podbean app, which is the host of our podcast, you will have access to every episode of How Did I Get Here ever released. That's right. That is correct, baby. The Podbean app. How Did I Get Here? Like us. Follow us, give us some stars, rate us, leave a comment, do something, right? Get involved. That's what we like. All right, here's uh, the rest of this song, Down to the Sound by Amy Ashley. Beautiful song. Her record, Sometimes a Woman is King, comes out February 17th. Get into it. Go to amyatchley.com for all of your Amy Ashley needs. Have a great week. Whatever it is you're doing, let's get down. Keeping you